Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay, I'm going to talk a little bit about the history, a uh, real short history of Sunnyside. Uh, Sunnyside Mine is a historic underground uh, mine with surface vein exposure, as you heard, in Sunnyside Basin. First discovery claims date back to the 1874 when the area was open to mining. And it was mined fairly continuously from 1880 to 1920, with last historic operation in 1936. Access to the Sunnyside Mine was moved from Sunnyside Basin to Gladstone in 1958 to 1960 by obtaining easement rights to the American Tunnel and extending it the second mile to the Sunnyside Mine or by providing easier access and lower mining costs because of pumping and hoisting ore and things like that. The original purpose of the American Tunnel was to service the Gold King Mine for drainage and or other access. There's a picture of the historical Sunnyside Mine. I think you've seen a better picture in Scott's presentation uh, up in Sunnyside Basin. But that's the original access to the Sunnyside Mine. And the American Tunnel surface, that's around uh, 2002, where's where the tunnel uh, facilities went in and ore come out this way and supplies and men went in this way after it, the access was uh, moved to Gladstone. Sunnyside Gold Corporation purchased the mine properties in 1985, and the mine was operated until 1991 when it was shut down uh, due to low metal prices, lack of ore reserves, and reclamation began. Inactive Sunnyside uh, facilities uh, to be reclaimed under our mine land reclamation permit were reclaimed from 91 to 95. Uh, the goal of them uh, uh, Reclamation activities was to minimize uh, contact with water was the main goal or shut off oxygen to them by covering or things like that. This is a picture you see of Bev's, I think, of the Mayflower Mill facilities and Tim's Pond uh, 1 and 2. But the, the Mayflower Mill was deeded uh, to the San Juan County Historical Society. Uh, along with funds to get it, in, make it into an interpretive museum. And uh, Taylor Pond 1 and 2 were reclaimed. Uh, the original reclamation plan was modified. It was going to be just uh, planting tailings on it and, uh, I mean, planting vegetation on it uh, in, with no cover material. And uh, that plan was revisited and the slopes were re-sloped and uh, stabilized for earthquake conditions, and then there was that uh, subsoil cap put on it. And here's another uh, of the facilities that was reclaimed under the permit, Sunnyside Basin. Looks a lot different than uh, the historic operations, but uh, you can see uh, mine waste piles all over. And then there was the Lake Emma collapse area. And uh, basically the goal there was to uh, get rid of the mine waste. Uh, the mine waste was put in the hole and used to, uh, to make a safety closure, I guess you would call it, for the uh, Lake Emma hole. And also to reduce uh, exposure of mine waste to, uh, to water. And there's a reclaimed picture uh, of the Sunnyside Basin facilities. Uh, on the south end, there's still some historic por portions, which is the mill loadout station. So anything that wasn't disturbed in the immediate area, there is still some historic significance in the area, and it's still there. This here is uh, close to the mill facilities. This was the old tailings pond with Boulder Creek running down through it. I talked about one and two. Uh, reclaimed. Well, they were moved back from this stream and uh, there's a picture after it was completed. And this is uh, another project we did. Uh, it's up at Gladstone. It's Lake Carbon Tailings Pond. And really it was a pre-law uh, a pre-law disturbance. It wasn't within our mine land reclamation permit or our later consent decree projects, but we did it to clean up, clean up the stream. Uh, 
I think uh, South Fork Cement Creek runs right down through that, and uh, two and a half pH tailings. And in order to reduce exposure to water and stuff, it was removed and consolidated into our tailings pond and then reclaimed. Uh, in 1996, after we've done all the inactive projects that we could do, uh, we still had to deal with uh, mine discharge. So in 1996, Sunnyside entered into a judicially approved consent decree with the Water Quality Control Division. And that uh, required Sunnyside to undertake a number of remedial activities on both Sunnyside and non-Sunnyside owned property in order to meet water quality criteria and to obtain release of liability. And that basically, uh, the activities are just a summary of the activities. It included the installation of bulkheads in the American Tunnel, which was part of our original closure plan. The completion of a list of remedial projects that were in all three drainages. The installation of several bulkheads in other locations within the mine workings. And the operation of a water treatment uh, facility during the pendency of the consent decree to mitigate short-term water quality impacts associated with uh, remedial activities. There's a typical bulkhead form uh, and there, I don't know if the light, you can see it good, but that's a completed bulkhead. Uh, basically the idea behind bulkheads is to uh, uh, put sulfide ore bodies uh, underwater so that it slows down the chemical reactions and also to, uh, to make an approximation of the pre-mining water, uh, water table. There's another consent decree project. It wasn't going to be done under our mine land reclamation permit. Uh, it was only going to be regraded and in place. And that is the historic American Tunnel waste dump. Basically, the American Tunnel and that level, all development work on that level ended up out here. So it, that was all uh, 1920s work where the fir first mile of the, uh, the American Tunnel was driven in around 1920, and then the second mile in the early 60s. And uh, anything above the American Tunnel waste never really come out of the mine. And instead of just reclaiming it on, on site, it was actually removed and taken to the uh, Mark Taylings Bond uh, uh, consolidate footprints, I guess, reduce footprints and exposure to water. This is another project we did under the consent decree. It's top of Red Mountain Pass, Longfellow. And the idea here was to uh, divert water around this dump. It was a highly acidic dump. And it also has historic features, uh, so we couldn't necessarily just take it out and remove it. But, uh, and we also used amendments to amend the pH, uh, fly ash amendment, uh, to reduce permeability. And uh, here's a, as I looked at several, quite a few years ago, but uh, basically diversions around the toe and it's sealed and the historic aspects still in place. Right next door to it is the Kohler, which is also the top of Red Mountain Pass. It was also a real low pH dump. Uh, you can see the acid mine drainage uh, affects the water pool down here. That's a lot of iron. So you see that you have a low pH, a lot of iron, and probably other metals. Diversions were done around this uh, to keep the water out of this mine pool. And uh, also, actually, the dump was removed and taken to our tailings pond to consolidate the footprint. The remaining uh, doesn't look as bad, but uh, and also during the winter, whoops, me, all the all the sludge out of this. It was easier to handle in the winter, so we did it in the winter when it was frozen. But we actually cleaned out all the low uh, pH sludge out of that pond area and. Uh, took it to the tailings pond. The remnant red water quality was basically uh, drainage from the Atta, which was up here, which was low pH. Sunnyside later funded a bulkhead uh, to uh, actually stop that or reduce the flow to surface and uh, stop the reactions underground. 
And as you heard, the stakeholders group just recently, last year, uh, actually did improvements on that, did additional grouting work to actually reduce the residual flows after that. This is another project we did. Uh, it was up Howardsville. It was the old Pride of the West tailings that was outside of that facility's permit area and was not likely to have been cleaned up, at least under that permit. And so uh, basically reduced the footprint exposure uh, to that. Uh, it was picked up and put in that tailings pond, the facility tailings pond. And also a good part of that material was taken to Sunnyside's uh, tailings pond, and that's an after picture. And Eureka Tailings was another place. You heard about the historic uh, tailings ponds at, uh, or mills at Eureka. Well, there's, there was a remnant tailings pond here, and then there was remnant tailings all through the uh, floodplain you know, that was exposed to water. Uh, over time, and basically we went there and removed all of them tailings and took them to our tailings pond. Here, to kind of give you, I've been spitting out locations, I'll try and put them in perspective for you. Here is Silverton down here, here's Mineral Creek, Longfellow and Kohler were up here at the headwaters, and then here's Cement Creek drainage. Lake Carbonate Tailings Pond, American Tunnel Waste Dumps here, as is the American Tunnel that went into uh, uh, Sunnyside Basin, connected to the ore body there. There's Sunnyside Basin and where Sunnyside Basin uh, Reclamation is. There's the, here's the Animus, and here is uh, Eureka Tailings, and uh, Friday of the West Tailings, and down here was where the Boulder Creek is and the Tailings Ponds. And main flower mill. Uh, Sunnyside, I only did a portion of them, uh, projects that we did, but Sunnyside completed approximately 20 reclamation remediation projects with expenditures of approximately 15 million in the basin. Water quality improvements have been observed in Mineral Creek and Upper Animus, as you heard Peter explain. Uh, and Sunnyside satisfied the terms of the consent decree and obtained complete release from the consent decree in 2003. But current conditions, as you heard from Peter, water quality in the Animus below Silverton has declined, declined since 2003. The decline in quality is attributable to Cement Creek. And a collaborative effort is being made by the Animus River Stakeholders Group, of which Sunnyside is a participant and has been since it started uh, to address cement creek water quality. And in support of the effort, Sunnyside has offered to contribute up to six and a half million dollars towards cost efficiency projects aimed at achieving measurable water quality improvements in the Animus River system in the near term. And that's it. Did I make my 15 minutes?